Welcome to Ravenwood Acres. Jake here. Over the past two decades plus, I've spent on and off again nearly seven years living in foreign countries outside the United States. Of course, much of that time was based off my military service, you know, on official duty. However, for the past nine months, I've been living in the country of Albania and Southern Europe. Today, I'm going to present you with some information that's some suggestions, some tips that will help you maybe travel more safely and more prepared while traveling internationally. I like to break this up into kind of two different categories. So if you haven't heard of everyday carry or EDC, you know, a lot of people have certain items they like to carry in their pockets, on their, on their person in some shape or form every day to be more prepared for those what if situations and then off body which off body can be a little uh, play on words because if you carry a bag on you a uh, crossbody bag a backpack you know something like that a purse whatever it's still on your body but it can be pulled off your body in separate so it's an additional carrying device that you typically might have on you especially when you're traveling internationally so we're going to break this down into those two different categories i'm going to provide some items show you some items that i use currently and then some other things that you might consider adding to your kit as you get ready to travel or even live in a foreign country jumping into on body edc everyday carry items now there's going to be as everything in here some variations right depending on what you're wearing you're going to the beach you might not have a whole lot of pocket space or things like that that's where maybe these items get transferred to your bag so that you have them still with you and then in they're accessible they're within a you know short distance from you they're on the beach under your umbrella whatever um <clears throat> so I'll start off with a watch, right? I have an old Sunto 5 here. It has a nav feature. I would recommend a watch with some sort of nav feature, whether it's a compass. This one's fairly simple. Basically, you save some points in there. You can um, add them to the, the watch, and then you can nav to those points, like back to your hotel or whatever, some safe place, some meetup point, whatever. There's more expensive ones that have like offline maps and actual navigation, like turn-by-turn -turn style what's in your budget right or maybe a simple compass you know thrown in your bag might help you if you're good at land nav. <laughs> so um edc lights are actually back up rfid wallet whether it's a passport wallet or normal wallet you should have rfid protection because there's a lot of criminals out there that are trying to get your information off your credit cards your debit cards your passports uh so on and so forth so carry some sort of a, and carry local currency have some backup currency at least 100 here in europe it's pretty easy now albania has got their own currency but other eu countries are all operating off of the euro so that makes it fairly easy now if you're traveling to and from a bunch of different countries it gets a little more challenging to have each country's currency but it sh might be worth it depending on your situation uh, edc light um a pin light like this um princeton tech here the alloy x is a great light but if you don't like to carry stuff in your pocket or you don't have pockets then this is kind of gets to where maybe you throw on one of those little little lights on your keychain or something like that something other than your cell phone because if you use your cell phone's battery you know then and you're in an emergency situation you might reduce your battery power when you really need it um <clears throat> a small knife right that depends on where you're at i have the the bug out benchmade bug out series here check your local laws i'll provide a link below where you can look some of those up it could be very difficult if you're traveling to multiple countries because the laws can vary quite dramatically so check before you get yourself in trouble all right secondary communications i like uh, well, primary, let's go back up to primary communications, your cell phone. Uh, have a cell phone that has like, at least the dual SIM feature, whether it's eSIM, one, you know, one eSIM slot, as they call it on the phone, and then a physical slot so you could have a local SIM card or maybe have one of those plans that allows you, like if you're T-Mobile, sometimes people just rely on that. <clears throat> but service can vary. And then have 
map apps, translator apps, any other important apps that you think need, and if they have a offline feature like the mapping feature, download those while you have internet service. Uh, Translate, Google Translate also has, you can download languages for offline operations that could be very helpful in an emergency situation where you may not have connection but you need to communicate with one of the locals, Um, like a taxi driver or something like that, you know. (laughs) So consider that before you travel, right? Secondary communications device, I like Mestastic Radios. I have a whole another channel, I'll link over here. That I do a lot of conversations. I have some videos here on Ravenwood Acres uh, about it is under MCOM, which stands for Emergency Communications. But they're a great offline decentralized little communicator that you can download an app and communicate between you and whoever it is you want to communicate, like your other people in your party, your family, your travel buddy, whatever. And it doesn't require cell service or Wi-Fi or anything to communicate. Yeah, you have to have the phone to interface with the radio, but um, you good way to communicate with your friends. A satellite communicator, I have like this one, which is a uh, company issued one, but this is more like an emergency location beacon uh, for like total emergencies. Something like the Garmin Enrich would be a great device to have, especially if you're traveling to countries uh, that are um, more high risk or you're going to be doing more high risk activities. A lot of backcountry hiking, camping, whatever, where you're going to know you're going to be outside of the normal cellular coverage areas they could save your life so something to consider uh, lighter a uh, little big lighter perfect p- purchase locally you can get one in a local store when you get there and throw it away when you leave uh, because obviously you usually you can't travel with them on airplanes so thumb drive maybe one of the little keychain ones this one's just an example but uh, waterproof one on your keychain with important documents. I also recommend having a secure folder on your cell phone with those documents so you have some backups, some redundancies, right? Encrypt that information on your phone and on your thumb drive because if someone gets a hold of that, uh, it could, could put, a, put, a, put a damper on your uh, vacation, right? Um, <clears throat> all right, so let's move on to off body or your EDC bag. So your EDC bag is something that you need to pick, right? It, it, and it's just going to be a backpack, a crossbody bag, something like that, a purse, you know, whatever it is you think, a fanny pack even, you know, that could work for you. Uh, a lot of people travel with those type of things already. Uh, yes, they're going to know you're a tourist typically if you're carrying around a bag. Uh, so what? <laughs> you know, unless you're in a very high-risk situation, and this video is probably not for you, you're traveling to a country where you definitely don't want to be identified as an American or a tourist there's other resources for that so all right so so I I my bag here is the solo New York bag I just picked it up a local retailer looked like a good bag and it's worked great for me it's held up pretty well over the last nine months and I do carry it every day to and from work or if I'm traveling outside the uh, city that I'm living in here in Albania so I have it with me and I have those little backup items in there, as you can see here in the video. Uh, First aid. So this typically for most people, something simple like a little um, boo-boo kit, you know, like cuts, scrapes, bruises, maybe one that has some ibuprofen or some Tylenol or uh, this one has some electrolyte tabs, some hydrocortisone cream, you know, some general bandages to keep you know if you get a small injury while you're traveling around and you want to treat it then and before you get to maybe go to an emergency room or maybe not a mercy room but you know go to a local clinic or something and uh, <clears throat> seek higher care so a trauma bag is something that i carry as a personal preference because of my background and if <clears throat> you're going to be traveling in a more high risk situations or more high risk countries, even medium risk countries. I recommend carrying a trauma bag. Do not skimp when you buy one and put image of here. Uh, North American rescue makes excellent medical equipment and you're going to pay for it though. Um, but remember this is a life saving trauma kit. Stop believing, right? Uh, so I don't, I wouldn't skimp if I was you. So, some sort of tools, right? 
it can vary. Um, maybe just a small multi-tool, one of the keychain Leathermans or, or a full-size Leatherman in your bag if you're able to carry, because sometimes that knife on there could be considered a weapon depending on where you're traveling. So once again, check before you travel or before you carry it. Um, <clears throat> some sort of extra EDC light. So self-defense uh, is obviously sometimes something that situation you don't want to find yourself in. So if you can get out of a situation before it gets violent, then that's the best option, right? You don't want to end up sitting in a police station somewhere in a foreign country. So just tip there. Um, this EDC light, the Nightcore EDC 27, has a strobe feature on it that is, it may not look super bright on the camera, but it is blinding, especially at nighttime. Disorientate, you know, someone's trying to, you know, mug you or whatever, or getting aggressive with you or won't get away from you. You can blast them in the face with that. It gives you disorientation them for a few seconds, enough time for hopefully you to get out and away from that situation. That is the number one recommendation is get away from that situation. Do not, I don't care if you think you're tough, do not engage unless you have to. Uh, if obviously if you're attacked and you're, you know, then defend yourself. But anyways, let's not get into the deep, dark stuff, right? Power pack. I love anchor Anchor is like a go-to company for me for those type of things. Anchor power pack, the 10,000 milliamp hour one I'll show you here is a great size. It's not very heavy. It has enough juice to charge your phone, depending on what size of the phone, maybe once, twice, three times, uh, or other devices. If you got a rechargeable flashlight, it could recharge that, which this is rechargeable. Well, my Princeton Tech, that's rechargeable. Headlamp, maybe an additional ADC would work, but I'm getting I'm going backwards here. That thumb drive, that's probably a, maybe a better spot is in your bag, unless you want to carry a keychain one, which some people don't like, because then it just makes that keychain really bulky. Um, so in your bag, water bottle. So just... A normal water bottle, maybe depending on the situation, you just pick up a small liter, less than a liter size, half a liter bottle at the local convenience store, and you throw that in your bag and you got water, right? And then you can refill it if you need. Or something like this Nalgene. Now, this one I have, and it's got water purification tablets. Now, are you someplace where you might need water, purifier, purifica water purification tablets? Maybe. So know where you're going, know the situation. Um, you can also get like LifeStraw makes one that has an integrated filter. So if you know you're going to be someplace that's going to have bad water, then maybe that's something you consider purchasing to add to your kit and traveling with it. So uh, satellite communicator, as I mentioned earlier, inReach, Garmin inReach or others is a good idea to have depending on your situation. Faraday bags, this is an optional item. I like to carry Faraday bags, have one for my cell phone, one on my laptop, especially when I'm traveling to and from. So I can just slide it in there if I'm traveling, uh, you know, through the airports and whatnot, and I'm not currently using them, I can just put it in that pouch and I don't have to worry about any Snoopy governments or third parties or anything like that penetrating my device and compromising my information. So if you don't think people are not trying to do that, then, well, I'm sorry to tell you, but they are. Uh, so adding some quick energy, something like little energy pouches, many companies make them, uh, candy even could be put in there, some sort of like protein, some almonds or uh, pistachios or something like that to throw in there, some sort of quick snack. You end up stuck somewhere, you miss a train, you gotta wait an hour for the next train and you're hungry and it's late at night. Having that on you might, might change your mood, right? You just sit back, eat a snack, and relax, and wait for your your, uh, your next you know train or whatever to come, or for that taxi that's taking forever to show up. Headphones, I I didn't initially add this, but just having some either physical headphones, the old corded ones, or Bluetooth ones could be really nice. You got to take a phone call someplace in a in a public area. You don't want everyone to hear your conversation you, or it's a loud area and it's hard to hear. It can make it really easy for you or much easier for you to be able to communicate, especially if you're in an emergency situation or you just need to calm down a little bit and listen to some nice music. <laughs> so those are all things you should consider. All right, so gonna wrap this up a little bit here is, so something you should consider, right? 
Uh, my final thoughts, my final notes, at a minimum, you should have travel insurance when you travel. Uh, however, if you're traveling in more high-risk country, countries, you should consider additional coverage. There's a company out there, I'm not affiliated with them at all, they're called Global Rescue. Um, and they are just going to give you that next level of peace and vine, especially if you're an adventurous traveler or somebody that's, you know, doing relief work or you're traveling to more austere or more high risk countries, as we've talked about already, where, you know, they're unstable, politically unstable. Maybe there's riots, maybe the civil war kicks off. Like you never know in some of these countries what you might run into and having that peace of mind, if, especially if you're traveling those type of places, you might want to consider that. If you found this long video, and there's a lot of information here useful, please subscribe to the channel, hit that thumbs up. If you have questions, put them down below. I can break this down into even a longer video, I promise. There's a lot of information here. If you have any suggestions, tips, whatever, down below also check out our website listed below, our social media links. Thanks for watching.